All right, everybody, what's up? Let's go ahead and do this uh, SAT practice test. Uh, no calculator can be used. You can see the little picture here is no calculator. So let's go ahead and get started. So problem number one, if x minus 1 over 3 is equal to k and k equals 3, what is the value of x? So what we're doing here is we're just setting, we're, we're plugging 3 in for k. So that's x minus 1 over 3 is equal to k, but in the place of k I'm going to put 3. And then I can multiply this up here. So x minus 1 equals 9. Add 1 to both sides, x equal 10. My answer is D. All right, this one for i equals the square root of negative 1. What is this sum? So this is just adding, uh, combining like terms. Uh, we're going to add the 7 and the negative 8 together. And then we'll add the 3i and the 9i together. And so 7 plus negative 8 is negative 1. And then 3i plus 9i is 12i. And so that would give us A. All right. Number three. On Saturday afternoon, Armand sent M text messages each hour for five hours. And Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for four hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by Armand and Tyrone on Saturday afternoon? All right, so, well, this one, it says Armand sent M text messages each hour for five hours. So M is the number of messages he sent each hour, and he did that for five hours, so that would be five times M. And then Tyrone sent P text messages each hour, for four hours, so that would be uh, 4p, right, four times p, and they want to know the total that they sent together, so we would add them, so that's 5m plus 4p, that would be c. Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week, she receives a batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of each day can be determined with, with the equation, let's write this, P equals 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days she has worked that week. What is the meaning of the value of 108 in this equation? Well, let's see. We're doing 108 and let's see the... What is D? All right, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days she has worked that week. All right, so we do the 23 times D. Well, that would, that would be B. Kathy starts each week with 108 phones to fix. Okay, so because P represents how many she has left. So if we take the number she started with minus how many she fixed, then that would be, that would leave us with how many she has left. So this has to be how many she started with. All right. All right. Which of the following is equivalent to, <clears throat> to the expression above? All right. So all this is is just combining like terms. Now, let me say this. A lot of times it's harder to subtract than it is to add. And it may take, you know, one extra step, but you're less likely to make a, st make a mistake. What I would do here is uh, rewrite this and change this to a plus. And then remember, if you change this up to a plus, then you have to change the sign of each term inside the parentheses. So that would be x squared y plus 3xy squared. Oh, I'm sorry. Minus 3xy squared plus 3y squared. And then you just combine like terms. So that would be this one and this one. That's 2xy squared. 
and then we've got a y squared here and a y squared here. Well, that just goes to zero, the negative three y squared plus three y squared. And actually we could stop there. We would know it's this one because we're only going to have two terms, but let's look at this. So we got five x y squared, three x y squared, five minus three is two. So that's two x y squared. And so that would give us C. A pediatrician, a pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height h of a boy in inches in terms of the boy's age a in years between the ages of 2 and 5. Uh, based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of a boy's height each year? Now, don't let the 2 and the 5 throw you off, okay? You don't need that. Uh, we want to know what's the, what's the increase in height okay well if you look at this the slope of the line your slope is 3 over 1 so remember this is rise over run so the run that's see if you plot this this is a and this is H okay so that's the age so if we go over one year well, we're going up three inches, and so that would be three. All right, so hopefully, hopefully that one made sense, okay? Because one tells us how we move left and right, and we're just using we're just moving one year, and for every one year we move to the right, we're moving up three, and so the change in the years is I mean the change in the height is three. All right, so let's look at this one. The formula above gives the monthly Payment M needed to pay off a loan of P dollars at R percent annual interest over N months. Which of the following gives P in terms of M, R, and N? Well, this one's easy. We're All we're doing is solving for P. And that's kind of like if you had uh, something like this, 5 equals uh, 3 halves X. See, we're just solving for P. Just like here, we would be solving for X. Well, what do you do? You multiply by the reciprocal. So this would be just be two thirds times five equals X. So that's the same thing that we're doing here. We're just doing the reciprocal of this and multiplying it over here. And so you don't even need to write it down. What is this when you flip it? Well, this goes into the numerator. Let's see which one has that in the numerator. Well, let's see, this one doesn't. Uh, let's see, this one, that one does, and then there's the numerator and the denominator here, so it would be B. All right, so how about this one? We got A over B is equal to 2. What is the value of 4B over A? Well, the first thing I notice here, 4B over A, that can be written as 4 times B over A. We can split them up like that. Well, over here we've got AB. Well, these are just reciprocals. So if AB is equal to 2, then B over A is equal to the reciprocal of this, which is 1 half. And so this is 4 times, and B over A is 1 half, and that would give us 2, which is C. What is the solution XY to the system of equations? All right, so one thing you could do is you could just start plugging in and you know, see where you see if, which ones work. But I think it'd be quicker to do the 3x plus 4y equals negative 23. And then write this with the x and y swapped. So that's negative x plus 2y equals negative 19. And then you can solve this using addition method. So we would multiply by negative 2. So that's 3x plus 4y equals negative 23. And then that would give us 2x minus 4y equals 38. Okay. And then if we add these, we get 5x is equal to 15x equal 3. And they want us to find the solution. But look, we've got x equal 3. This is the only one where x is equal to 3, so we can stop there. That's b. For the function g defined above, a is a constant, and g of 4 is equal to 8. What is the value of g of negative 4? So what we need to do first is figure out what a is. 
So we know that g of 4 is equal to a times 4 squared plus 24, and that equals 8. See, I've just plugged the 4 in for x. And so this gives me 4 squared is 16, so 16a plus 24 equals 8. And then all I need to do is solve for a. So I get 16a is equal to negative 16. a is equal to negative 1. And so now that's going to give me g of x is equal to negative x squared plus 24. And then I'm going to plug the negative 4 in. So g of negative 4 is equal to negative negative 4 squared plus 24. And so that's going to be, that's the negative. Negative 4 squared is 16 plus 24. And that is going to give us 8. So our answer is A. All right, in the equations of above, B and C represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively. X weeks after July 1st, during last summer, what was the price per pound of beef when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken? All right, so we need to set these equal to each other and solve, and solve for X. So that's going to be 2.35 plus 0.25x is equal to 1.75 plus 0.40x. So we're solving an equation with decimals. Okay, well, we want to get rid of the decimals because we can't use a calculator and it's a lot more difficult to do operations on decimals. So if we multiply, if we multiply each term by 100, because, see, we have to move the decimal two places to get rid of it. So that'll give us 235 plus 25x plus 175 plus 40x. And then we just solve. So we'll subtract 25x to both sides. We'll subtract 175 to both sides. So that's going to give me... No, oh, I'm sorry. This is 175. That should be an equal sign right there. So this is going to give me 60 is equal to 15x. Divide both sides by 15. I get x equal 4. But now what do we want to know? What is the price per pound of beef? So we've got to take the x and plug it into here. So I get b is equal to 2.35 plus 0.25 times 4. Four. Well, remember, 0.25 is the same as 1 fourth, and 1 fourth times 4 is 1. And so that right there is 1. This 2.35 plus 1 is 3.35, so that's D. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, it says a line in the XY plane passes through the, through the origin and has a slope of 1, 7. Which of the following points lies on the line? Okay, so this one, there, you know, there's a couple of ways we could probably do it. But I think the easiest way is if we just draw this, and it tells us that it passes through the origin. And we know that the slope is rise over run. So if we start here and we go up one unit, and then we go to the right seven units, okay, that would be a point on the line. Well, do you see the point? This would be what the point seven one. Well, that's that's not in here. So let's do it again. Let's go up one more unit and then over seven units. To that would be to fourteen. This would be the point fourteen two. Well, you see it there. That's D. All right. So. If x is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent to this? So it looks like all they're doing here is they're just simplifying this. This is just complex fractions. So we're going to multiply each term, see, the 1, this, and this, by the common denominator. Well, what's the common denominator? The common denominator is x plus 2 times x plus 3. And same thing here x plus 2 
times x plus 3. And x plus 2 times x plus 3. Multiply each term by the common denominator. So 1 times this, that leaves us with x plus 2 times x plus 3. Here, the x plus 2's cancel, so I'm left with just x plus 3. Here, the x plus 3's cancel, so 1 times that, that's x plus 2. And so if I foil that, that's x squared plus 5x plus 6 over, and then x plus x is 2x, and 3 plus 2 is 5. And so that would be this one, b. All right, if 3x minus y equals 12, what is the value of 8x over 2y? All right, so th this one's kind of tricky. The I would be guessing, I would think that if you were guessing at this, you might guess d. But let's look at this. What we notice here about this is this is 2 to the y and this is 8 to the x. Well, 8 can be written in terms of 2 raised to a power. 8 is 2 cubed. So let's just try that out and see what happens. And so I get 8 to the x over 2 to the y. Well, 8 is what? 2 cubed. And then that's raised to the x power over 2 to the y. And then remember this, you multiply. So that's 2 to the 3x over over 2 to the y. Well, remember, if you have like bases, what do you do? You subtract the exponents. So we get 2 to the 3x minus y. So this is equal to 2. Well, what's 3x minus y? Well, they told us up here it's 12. And so this would be a. All right, so here if ax plus 2 times bx plus 7 equals 15x squared plus cx plus 14 for all values of x, and a plus b is equal to 8, what are the two possible values of c, this value here? All right, so let's take a look at this. Let's, let's set this. Okay, well, we got this equal to this. So we've got ax plus 2 times bx plus 7 equals 15x squared plus cx plus 14. Well, let's go ahead and multiply this out. So that's abx squared, the first, and then the outside, plus 7ax, the inside, plus 2bx, and then the last, plus 14, is equal to 15x squared plus cx plus 14. So this is abx squared plus, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out this common factor of x, and so that's going to be 7a plus 2b. I don't know if it'll help or not, but we're going to see. Equals 15x squared plus cx plus 14. All right, so let's see what we've got. Well, let's see what we know. We know we know that AB, let me do this in a different color. We know that AB is equal to 15. Because see the x squared and the x squared, the coefficient of this x squared is 15, so A times B has to be 15. Okay? All right, so let's see. Let's see what else we've got here. Well, they tell us up here that A plus B is equal to to 8, right? So we know, let's see what we know here. Uh, well, that tells us that B is equal to 8 minus A. So I could actually take this and plug it in for B. So I've got A times 8 minus, whoop, I'm sorry, 8 minus A is equal to 15. And so that's going to give me 8a minus a squared equals 15. And then if I move these over to the other side, that's going to give me a positive a squared. Move this over, that's going to give me minus 8a. And that just stays on the same side, 15. And instead of putting the equal 0 over here, I'm going to put the equal 0 over here. All right, so now let's just let's factor this and see what happens. So... Let's see, that's going to be what? A minus 5, A minus 3. Set each one equal to 0. 
And so A equals 5 or A equals 3. All right, so now, well, we can figure out what C is because we know that C is the coefficient of X and this is the coefficient of X over here. And we can plug in for A and B. You see that? So look at this. When A is equal to 5, that means B is equal to what? Well, we plug the 5 into here. 8 minus 5 is 3. And then when A is equal to 3, we plug that in. That gives us B is equal to 5. So let's do this one first. So I get 7 times 5 plus 2 times 3. And that is equal to 41. So C could be 41. And then we let's plug this one in. So 7 times 3 plus 2 times 5. Well, that equals 31. So C could be 41 or 31. And you can see that is D. All right, so this page here, this just kind of tells you directions on how to fill out your answers for the last page. Uh, I'm not going to come back and fill my answers out on, you know, a page like this. I'm just going to work the problems and give you the answers. So let's just go on to the next page and work those problems. All right, so, all right, so we're down to the last five problems. All right, so if t is greater than 0 and t squared minus 4 is equal to 0, what is the value of t? All right, so, well, we just solved this. We moved the 4 over. t squared equals 4. So remember the square root property. t is equal to plus or minus 2. Don't forget to pl put the plus or minus 2. But they do tell us that t is greater than 0, so they don't want the negative. They just want the positive. Okay, And the reason I tell you not to forget the plus or minus is because on the test, they may say t is less than 0. And then you would choose the negative 2. All right, so let's look at this one. It says a summer camp counselor wants to find a length, x, in feet across a lake as represented in the sketch above. The lengths represented by AB, EB, BD, and CD on the sketch are determined to be 1,800, 1,400, 700, and 800 feet, respectively. Segments AC and DE intersect at B, and angle AEB and CDB have the same measure. What is the value of X? All right, so let's just start out first by labeling this thing. So this, this is 1,800. This is 700. Is that right? BD. Yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be 700. And then EB, do they tell us that? Yeah, that's 1,400. And then they give us CD. Well, that's 800. All right. What is the value of X? So we're looking for this value here. All right. So we know that this angle and this angle are the same. So all this is, this is just a proportion. So we can say C over D. So C over D over X, this side. Okay, so these would be, th these would be similar triangles. Okay, these are similar triangles. Uh, this angle and this angle are the same. And then that would equal what? BD. BD over EB. Okay, so this side is proportional to this side. Okay, because they see they give us these angles here are similar. So now it's just a matter of plugging all this in. So that's just going to be what 800 over X equals 700 over 1400. So if I move the X up here, the 1400 goes up there. 
So that's going to be 800 times 1400 is equal to 700 X. Now look, don't multiply that out. They're not letting you use a calculator. So they are probably not going to give you very difficult problems to, uh, to add and multiply and subtract. So we divide by 700 on each side. Look, that goes in, that's two, so that's 1600 is equal to X. And so there's your answer. All right, according to the system of equations above, what is the value of X? All right, so, well, just, we did one of these while ago. Let's just go ahead and All right, so they just want to know the value of X. So, okay, so let's get rid of the Y terms and then we can solve for X. So to do that, we're just gonna to need to multiply this one by negative two. Okay, I know it would be easier just to subtract the two and the X's would go out, but then we would solve for Y and then we would have to plug that back in to get X. So let's just eliminate the Y's. All right, so that's gonna be negative two X minus two Y equals 18 and x plus 2y equals negative 25. And so that's going to give me negative x equals negative 7 divided by negative 1, x equal 7. In a right triangle, one angle measures x naught, where the sign, I mean, measures x degrees, where the sine of x degrees is 4 fifths, what is cosine of 90? minus x degrees. Well, that's easy. That's four fifths. Remember your co-functions? Remember the sine of x or theta, whatever your trig book says, is equal to cosine of 90 minus that angle. Just so these are the same. All right. If a is equal to five square root of two and two a is equal to square root of 2x, what is the value of x? All right, so for this one, we're just going to take this, plug it in for a, so 2 times 5 square root of 2 equals square root of 2x, multiply, that's 10 square root of 2 equals 2 square root of 2x, and then we'll need to do what? Well, we'll need to square both sides, and so 10 squared is 100, square root of 2 squared is 2, and that equals 2x, so 200 equals 2x, divide by 2, x equals 100. And there you go. That wasn't too bad, so uh, if, I hope the video helped. Uh, check out my other videos, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.